Hello folks, I'm trying to do a little quick tutorial today on just how to get started with Adobe uh, Premiere Pro CC editing video for people who have never done it before and I'm going to cut all the nonsense out of it and just get straight into it so we can do some really fast editing if you've just uh, gotten Adobe Premiere Pro CC and it maybe baffles you. When you first bring it open, what I've got here is, is, is a timeline I'm working on, a video I'm working on, and your screen may not look like what you see here. Um, so when you first bring it open, you know, it's, it's going to somewhat be mysterious to you, and it may not look like this. I'm going to give you a tip of mine right off the bat. I like to go up under Window here and go to Workspace, and I like this Editing CS 5.5. Now you may not like that, you may like the one that comes by default when it comes up, but this is to me a more logical one. It's one of the older ones, so I would recommend you go to that. All it's going to do is rearrange where different things appear on the screen, uh, but to me this has always been really the, the most elegant uh, layout that Adobe's ever come up with, so without any more ado, we'll just go ahead and start talking about it. If you've got your screen looking like this, what you have you have over here your program video. This is what is going to actually really go to be rendered out. This is what your final product is going to be. Over here is going to be a preview window where you can preview different things. You see I've got a sound file up here now, but I can go in here and I can have a piece of video and I can preview these videos. Uh, you know, I can slide this little, this little thing right here is your little uh, position that shows where you are. You're here, i got a piece of green screen video. What this is, I'm doing a blog uh, posting about how I edit video and how I conduct interviews. And so this is a, this, that's what I'm working on here. And so I'm using this as an example. So what you do here, you bring your video into this. Now, how do you do this? It's, your, your block is probably gray now and has nothing in it. There's different ways you can do it. You click on this over here, which is your, uh, this is your, your um, project window. This is where all of your files will end up going. And I just go file, excuse me, file and import. File and import. See control I here. I hesitate just a little bit because I don't really usually do that. Do it this way. I just double click inside this window. But if you do that, then you can bring a piece of video in. Here's where I've shot some video and it's in a folder on my hard drive. Here's an MP3 I, I used for the audio. So if I wanted to bring number 630 in, I already have it in here already, but if I want to bring it in again, I just do that and say open. And now 630 comes in again. Now I'm going to delete that since I already have 630 in. And um, so, so, But the quicker way to bring your video in and your audio and your photos, whatever you want to bring in and, and work with, is just to double click in that window. Then it brings up the same thing. You navigate to whatever folder you, you want and say I want to bring in 631, I'd say open. And it comes right in. So I got six, two six thirty ones here now. But anyway, I've already imported my video, and I started working on a timeline here. And then I decided, well, I'll wait and uh, and and uh, show you guys how to do that. Now, before you can do any video editing, there's going to be a a probably a big blank space right here on your computer screen. If it's the first time you've opened it, and you're not seeing what I'm seeing. You have to create a sequence first. And so what you do, you go File New Sequence, or you can do Control N. Control N does it as well, but I'm going to go ahead and do it since we got it this way. And you're going to pick what your what kind of video, the best guess as to what you shot. Now, most people nowadays are shooting AVC HD 1080p, uh, and so what will probably come up will be this kind of thing. It'll ask you what kind of sequence do you want. I, you twirl down these little arrows, and I'm going to go to 1080p. It will come open, you know, uh, not open like that, but because it knows I've been there, it's defaulted there. I'm going to pick 1080p 30 because that's what I shot this in. Sometimes you'll shoot, um, you know, just different ways. You might shoot interlaced video. Uh, we can do a whole other tutorial at some point on how you pick that. But the kind of cool thing about the new CC version is that it will change this for you if you mess up. So don't be too concerned about this. I'm going to call this uh, test sequence. Doesn't matter what you call it. You call it whatever you want to, whatever your subject's going to be. I'm going to say OK. And so here is this test sequence, and it made it active down here. So here's the one I was editing. Here's the new one. So this is what you'll end up seeing. See, right? And right quick, you'll see you got V1, V2, V3. You got A1, A2, A3. Well, what happens is V1 and A1 are, will be paired up, Video 2 and Audio 2. This is Video 1 and Audio 2. One video two and audio two video three audio three it just comes up by default this way so I'm going to go ahead and pull in this uh, zero zero one which is the piece of video that I started with I'm going to show you how quickly you just start editing I just I just double clicked on it so I could see this over here now if I want to preview this piece of video and see where I want to come in and out on this video where do I want this video to start you know, typically you shoot some video and you got a little bit of him hawing around at the beginning and end 
because you're thinking about what you're going to say. And I do that with this piece of video. So I'm going to maybe turn the volume up so I can hear myself just a little bit better. And here's the piece of video and what I said at the beginning. Hello everyone, I thought I'd do a little blog today about just shooting a really good interview, making it sound nice and editing it well. Okay, so that's pretty good. I didn't, I didn't mess around too much at the beginning, but there were a few frames that I that I thought, well, I'm, I'm, you can hear me taking a big breath here. Hello. So I'm, before I do hello, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm, just gonna, I'm hitting the arrow key to the left. So I'm going to cut out my breath here. And what you can do, you can get this little... Uh, gray key here and slide in and it, it zooms in on this so it just gets all the way down to the front of the frames you can scrub in so I'm just dragging a little yellow thing there see so that's where I say hello now I'm gonna click this little mark in button here this is the little uh, looks like a bracket and what that does you see how it turned all this black and this is gray well from here on out this everything that's gray is going to be usable and it's going to come down here on this timeline so I'm going to click uh, and I now I could just bring down the video if I want to I could just bring down the audio this one brings down just the video this one brings down just the audio it shows a little wave see drag audio only or drag video only if you go up here and you click in the window and pull it down then you have okay now here's this is what it's going to do it's going to put that video on the timeline here's what i was saying where it fixes things for you if i've chose the wrong sequence there or the wrong kind of sequence it gives me an opportunity to keep the existing settings i've set up or to change the sequence settings uh, if you don't know how you've shot your video you might want to choose change sequence settings and i'm going to do that in this case so now it has the right kind of video. I can't remember how I shot this video. But if I go over here now, it's changed the sequence. If I click on test sequence up here, it'll show me that I shot 1920 by 1080, uh, 29.97 UFF is the format I shot in. Okay, so I messed up there. So what I've got, I've got this piece of video. I happen to know that it's pretty good except until I get up here to the end. So I'm going to go to the end. Um, I see. So I'm going to shoot just a little bit of it. So I hear myself. Oh, let me see people and key out the backgrounds. So I'm going to record just a little bit of an interview about uh, hiking around the... Uh, okay, I decided not to talk about hiking. So what I'm going to yeah, do, I'm going to cut that part out. out. Key out the backgrounds. So I'm going to record... So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do large groups of people and key out the backgrounds. So that's where I want to stop. I'm going to hit the C key. Uh, which is, it, it turns my tool here, this pointer tool, into a cutting tool or into a razor. So I'm doing that there. And now I'm going to fast forward and let it play through what I want to get rid of. So I'm going to record just a little bit of an interview about uh, hiking around the, uh, let's see. So I'm going to shoot just a little bit of an interview about my approach. And so I'm going to do this. So I'm going to shoot just a little bit of hiking around the, uh, it's right there's where I want to get rid of. Now I'm going to hit V to point again, and that pointer allows me to select the part I want to delete. I'm going to hit delete, and there we go. And if you right click in this space in here, you can do a thing called ripple delete. Now you can grab that video and pull it over too, if you want to, and it'll snap into place. Or, or let me show you again how this works. So you got a whole bunch of video. Maybe you got 10 pieces out here. You don't want to have to grab each individual piece and pull it over. You just right click in there and do ripple delete. It pulls everything over. So here's what we got. Groups of people and key out the backgrounds. I see. I don't want that might let me see. So I'm going to pull this out. I'll just, I'll just grab that and pull it over. See, it's ripple delete again. Backgrounds. So I'm going to shoot just a little bit of an interview about my approach, and then we're going to edit that in the studio, and I'll give you some of my tips that I like uh, to use with video editing. And we're going to we'll stop that. I cut that little bit off the end. Now I had this little bit of jump cut here, right? It jumps from that to so that. Maybe we want to create a transition. And uh, what you've got over here now, depends on what you've got down in this bottom that comes up. It might come up media browser, it might come up info, it might come up effects. I went ahead and clicked on the effects tab and I've typed in the letter, the word cross, C-R-O-S, because I'm looking for a thing called a cross dissolve. Now, if you do put nothing in here, then you can go in here and you can explore all these different effects. You've got audio effects, uh, audio transitions, video effects, and things like that, adjust, auto color. There's just a huge amount of stuff in here that we could go over. But right quick, I know I want to cross dissolve, so I'm going to type in C-R-O-S, and it's going to pull up a cross dissolve. I'm going to pull this over that little 
uh, divider right there, okay? And get right in the middle of it, and it'll split that. And what's going to happen now, we're going to cross dissolve one or the other. It looks like this. Backgrounds. So I'm going to shoot just a little bit of an interview about my approach. And So there you go. You've, got, uh, you've already done a little bit of video editing here, and you can see that... Uh, you know that the cross dissolve makes that transition a little bit smoother. Now we're going to segue into a part here where I do part of the interview. I'm going to double click on uh, 629 here, and this is me getting ready to interview. Now I've already gone here and put my endpoint in because I know this is close to where I want to start. So I've actually gone ahead and watched me at the beginning where I don't where I'm just getting my camera set up. I'm going over to sit down. I don't want to use any of that. So I've already put if I zoom in here this endpoint in right there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this piece of video down because I know it's close to right. That's my big belly there. <laughs> okay, so maybe here at this point I want to segue this over with a different kind of transition. So this time I like to use cube spin. I'm going to do C-U-B-E over here. I'm going to pull a cube spin over onto this. And here is me getting ready to talk. I like uh, to use with video editing. Okay. So that was not the smoothest transition in the world. But here, here goes to show you, I'm on the camcorder sitting back a good three or four feet from me now, four or five feet probably, and it doesn't sound very good, does it? That's where I like to use better audio. I like to put audio up overhead, and this actual little video that I'm producing here will show that at some point. You'll, you actually go back and watch this video that I've produced, and you'll see. So what have I done here? Well, I've got... Uh, I've got this piece of video, and I put I left this little click here at the beginning just to help me out, and I'll show you why. See how I kind of I kind of slapped my thigh or something, I guess, kind of really by mistake, but it's kind of serendipitous I did that because that helps me take this MP3 uh, that I recorded. I had a microphone hanging just over my head, and it's called STE uh, STE 16 over here. I'm gonna click on that, and I can actually see I found the place where that little click was with my hand. So there it is. And here's where I first start to talk, but this right here is that little click. So this time I've got an end point. I, I, I found my spot where I wanted to come in and I click this little mark in so that I know where to bring it in. I'm going to pull this audio down here underneath. Now you may have noticed a while ago that I expanded this audio. When it first comes up, you can't see that audio wave, but you want to be able to see that when you're going to be synchronizing your audio. So I pulled this thing down. All you do is you get the little line underneath the A1 here and pull it down. And it makes it so you can see that. And you can make it as tall as you want it to make it. You can go down even farther. I'm going to do the same thing with my audio 2 that I brought in. And now I can see here visually where this wave, where this, this little click is. And you can see the humps here from my audio so I can know how this matches. So I'm going to try to pull this over and match it pretty close. Let's watch what happens. Okay, so that looks pretty close, but you know what? It's not exactly close. It's not exactly dead on. And I want my audio to match up because I'm going to actually replace this other audio with this uh, this audio down here. I want this audio to hear, not this one, to sound. So that's as close in as I can get that. What I'm doing, I'm, just, I'm zooming in by pulling on the edges of this little bar down here. So I can see that that's not exactly lined up. It's pretty close. What you can do, though, you can go over here, and it's just this little, uh, little thing that looks like there's some lines here, right? You can click on that, and you can go to Show Audio Time Units. And I'm going to click on that for just a second. What that does, that allows me to zoom in even closer than I'm allowed to with the frames, because otherwise we were hooked up to just frames. So now I can grab this, and I can pull it a little closer. And I can start to see, I can look at this little wave right here, and I can see that's pretty close. I can zoom in even closer if I want to. I don't want to get crazy close. But I can see here that looks pretty synchronized up. I can see here that looks pretty synced. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to this little thing here, and I'm going to take it off of audio time units, because I'd rather work, once the audio is synced, I'd rather work up with these frames. So I'm just pulling this out to the beginning. So now this is all synced. And I don't really want to have that little click anymore. I just left it on there so I could synchronize stuff. So I probably prematurely put this cube spin in. I'm going to take that out now. And all I do is click on it and delete it. And I'm going to pull these things back. Okay. So now I've got synchronized audio. And I'm going to right click in here again, ripple delete. So now I'm going to put that cube spin back on there again, and now I have a, a cube spin transition, and I'll have the right audio. Now I'm still hearing this audio, okay? I don't want to hear that audio. I'd rather hear this better audio that was closer to my face. So let me let me let you hear what it's going to sound like. You got this little M button that's for mute or solo. So I'm going to hit the uh, first. I'm going to hit the mute button on my good audio, which is this one here, and I'm going to probably 
I'm gonna, you know, it looks like it's probably not quite as loud as the other. So I want to make it a little bit louder. Well, I'm gonna, so I've got this audio. This is my good audio. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to audio gain. I want to bump it up about three decibels. So I type a three in the dB hole here. Uh, so I hope this is not blowing your mind, folks. I'm just showing you where some stuff is that you'll definitely need for just your initial good video if you're going to do a, a nice looking piece of video and have good audio with it. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to let you hear what it sounds like with the good audio first. That I like. Let's start right here. Okay, first of all, I like to have the subject. Okay, so it's that. Well, I'm sorry, that's what it sounds like with the bad audio. This is the camcorder audio. First of all, I like to have the subject well lit, and we have a nice little bank of lights here. Okay, so let's hear what that sounds like with the you hear that sounds like with the camcorder audio. Here's what it sounds like with my good audio. Okay, first of all, I like to have the subject well lit, and we have a nice little bank of lights here. So here again, uh, before. Here, I also like to have the subject sitting on a stool. And here's your after. Stool, not. Uh, so you can see it's a whole lot better having that close-up okay. mic. So I didn't really get real about why. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm kind of doing it's not so great. But uh, my my really first uh, good comment comes right here. Okay, first of all, I'll pick up. I'm gonna start with my okay. I hit the C again. I'm going to click here and I'm going to click down here. I've just cut this. I'm going to do a V again. I'm going to drag over this and I'm going to delete. I ripple delete here again. And I'm going to pull that cube spin one more time over the top of this. And so now I've got this kind of thing. Okay, first of all, I like to have the subject well lit and we have a nice little bank of lights here. So good. So there, now I've got pretty much what I want uh, from an editing point of view.